trendy new weight loss method has been getting a lot of buzz lately, and it is called intermittent fasting. It's fasting, a dieting technique once shunned. After I'd gotten 40 pounds off, the next 10 pounds seemed to take forever. Shifting focus from what she was eating to when she was eating it. She ate meals earlier and over less time, eating only from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. So there's a growing mass of studies that support IF. Now, IF simply is intermittent fasting, okay. which exactly as the name says, is a short period of calorie restriction. To understand how intermittent fasting grew to mainstream popularity, we must first venture into what caused the spark of curiosity into such an abstract form of eating. What sparked the intrigue? Fasting has been practiced by many religions for years and is still practiced today. Jainism, Sikhism, Taoism, Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Baha'i faith, and many other religions have interjected a system, concept, or variation of fasting. Buddhist monks and nuns who follow the Vinaya rules do not eat after their afternoon meal. Within the Baha'i faith, fasting is observed from sunrise to sunset during the Baha'i month of Allah. Islam practices an obligatory fast for all Muslims during the month of Ramadan with a few exceptions, many Muslims follow this practice. Christianity breaks up into many different subgroups that all fast based on elements of the Bible that depict stories of fasting as well as pain and suffering. For example, the Lenten fast is practiced which is a 40-day fast to commemorate the fast observed by Jesus Christ. Although done at a lesser degree by abstaining from specific foods rather than abstaining from food altogether, the concept remains apparent, purposefully refraining from indulging as a means to help the body and mind. This method of abstaining has intrigued the world and has sparked interest in the medical field. An American naturopath and alternative medicine advocate named Herbert Shelton advocated for fasting back in the mid to late 1900s. He famously stated in his book, The Science and Fine Art of Fasting, that fasting must be recognized as a fundamental and radical process that is older than any other mode of caring for the sick organism for it is employed on the plane of instinct and has been employed since life was first introduced upon earth. Fasting is nature's own method of ridding the body of diseased tissues, excess nutriment, and accumulation of waste and toxins. At this point, there were little to no fasting studies that have existed. He was echoing the sentiments of those who utilize religious fasting and proclaim to feel amazing mental and health outcomes. He also ran his own test by supervising the fast of nearly 40,000 people. He believed wholeheartedly that fasting was the best means for healing and sustaining biological health. Unfortunately, his ideas and methods did not have a revolutionary impact on the medical field at the time and was categorized as alternative medicine falling into an abyss of theoretical healing effects whose effectiveness has not been clearly established using scientific methods. With no large companies pushing towards any further understanding of fasting and its benefits on the human body, it appeared that fasting would stay and potentially die in this abyss of alternative medicine. It seemed that no one was talking about fasting anymore, especially after Herbert Shelton's death in 1985. In 1999, a man by the name of Ori Hofmeckler published a small article on a site called T-Nation using something he called survival science. He spoke of a diet approach that required eating one big meal during dinner time that he coined the warrior diet. 
This published article gained a lot of buzz, and three years later, he released his first book titled The Warrior Diet, in which he dives deeper into the method while introducing more alternative approaches such as eating or grazing on fruits and vegetables throughout the day before consuming your final big meal. This was the first known intermittent fasting published information. Ori Hofmeckler, unbeknownst to him at the time, would be planting a seed that would change the world of medicine and fasting. During the years between 2002 to 2006, many animal studies were corroborating Ori Hofmeckler's belief in what was happening to the body when intermittent fasting. Also, many new findings in terms of brain functions and biological changes that provide benefits such as stem cell production and autophagy were being observed during these animal studies. Finally, intermittent fasting was gaining traction. In 2006, a man named Brad Pillon, who graduated with a degree in applied human nutrition, released a book called Eat, Stop, Eat, which was an alternative intermittent fasting approach which focused on eating a low-calorie meal one or two days a week. This seemed much more attractive to the average person and increased the intrigue for intermittent fasting. The following year, in 2007, an internet personality named Martin Burkhan launched the Lean Gains Method. Markin Burkhan was credited with creating the first big impact on the internet in regards to intermittent fasting. His lean gains method consists of an 8-hour eating window with a 16-hour fasting window. This method is arguably still the most popular method of intermittent fasting that exists today. The internet was starting to buzz, and a spotlight was being placed on intermittent fasting. Due to the newfound intrigue on intermittent fasting, a boiling pot of interest was brewing and it hit critical mass in 2012. When Michael Mosley's documentary aired on the UK station BBC2 called Eat, Fast, and Live Longer, people were now starting to look at intermittent fasting as an overall health tool rather than simply a weight loss tool. The documentary shared impactful anecdotes of people who were healthy and completing amazing feats like running a marathon at 100 years old, further reinforcing the notion that there might be more to fasting than the public may have thought. Celebrities were revealing their fitness secrets and were slowly proclaiming that they too were utilizing intermittent fasting to gain the body type that they needed for the roles in major feature films. Every time he has to do one of these, the work involved which people don't see is how hard he works on just getting the body right for it. I mean, it's... It actually got the diet from uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, his mate of mine. And every day what I do is I eat for eight hours and I fast for 16. This sparked multiple creators on YouTube to debate the topic via video. There were people speaking in favor of intermittent fasting and those speaking against its benefits, claiming that we have very little human studies to corroborate the suggestions of health and fitness. The internet was now full steam ahead. In regards to opening the door for conversation and even if the talks were positive or negative, it was keeping intermittent fasting in the public domain. YouTube was continuing its push and viewers could not get enough of intermittent fasting transformation videos. Videos from channels with little to no video content posting transformation videos that were garnering hundreds of thousands of views. My video was actually one of those in that pool, and it is still my most viewed video to this day. A new wave was elevating intermittent fasting into a much broader audience. However, many were still skeptical and felt that not enough doctors were advocating for this eating method, making it very hard for them to accept the notion that this is a healthy alternative. That gap or lack thereof would be challenged by a man who would rise to near superstardom status in the intermittent fasting community. In December of 2013, a nephrologist by the name of Dr. Jason Fung emerged with a video simply titled, How to Reverse Type 2 Diabetes Naturally. In this video, Dr. Fung expresses the use of intermittent fasting or therapeutic fasting to heal and even reverse type 2 diabetes. The internet was buzzing. With the video reaching over a million views, it was obvious that Dr. Fung was given the torch as the doctor who is pushing for intermittent fasting as a means to not only lose weight, but heal and prevent diseases like type 2 diabetes. 
He then released a best-selling book called The Obesity Code, unlocking the secret of weight loss. The internet could not get enough of Dr. Jason Fung, and the popularity of intermittent fasting continued to grow. In 2016, many creators on YouTube emerged in which intermittent fasting information was an important factor to the content. The internet now had places to go that would assist them on the methods and strategies involved in intermittent fasting. The interest was reaching a near fever pitch. And then in October of 2016, the Nobel Prize was given to Yoshinori Ashumi, a cell biologist who was able to present a better understanding of autophagy and the medical field was now lining up with the intrigue of the internet and this pushed for more human studies involving intermittent fasting. Fasting was now given the perceived credibility that it needed from the medical industry in terms of its importance on health. This allowed many naysayers or people who were on the fence to dive deeper into intermittent fasting. Those moments were the key moments that created the buzz and pushed intermittent fasting into the mainstream. If we fast forward to today, we see intermittent fasting everywhere. Human studies are confirming animal studies done in the early 2000s. More and more creators are speaking about intermittent fasting. Things that were not previously considered when looking at weight loss are now being discussed when talking about health and fitness. Mainstream media is looking towards fasting and seeing the reaction that comes from it. Where will intermittent fasting go from here? We don't know. But what we do know is that those who previously raised their eyebrows to the notion of fasting are being overwhelmed by data and fitness experts on the health benefits of intermittent fasting. It is slowly changing the world. One thing that has happened to many in the fitness industry when attempting to teach or learn is that they lack the ability to learn and teach. When new emerging science threatens the science of the past, it is viewed as nonsense. And until it is adopted at a worldwide level by the medical industry, it will always have naysayers who reject the emerging research. No matter what one thinks about intermittent fasting, you cannot deny the impact and growth of this concept. People want more. And as long as there are medical research searching for better answers, it doesn't appear that intermittent fasting is going away anytime soon. What's going on guys, it's your boy Edward V. This is my second video essay on the rise of intermittent fasting. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's have a discussion down below. Let me know what else you would like for me to talk about. My video essays are overarching kind of concepts. They're not single intermittent fasting elements. If I do a video essay, I want it to be more than the sum of its parts. So if you guys have overarching topics in regards to doing a video essay related to intermittent fasting, let me know. I'll gladly take a look at that, see what we can do in the future. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this second video essay. And I wanna go ahead and put my patrons from my Patreon up on the screen. And of course, as always, guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for an FAQ. Peace.